Well, earlier this week, child protection workers in Narragin sounded the alarm about their workload, saying they are at breaking point and it's putting kids at significant risk. Their union says some positions have been vacant for more than 18 months and workers are often having to take kids home with them because there's nowhere else for them to go. Just as an example, we know that over the uh, Mother's Day long weekend, we had a worker take home three siblings because their placement broke down. Um, so she took those kids over that long weekend uh, and then had to appear at work on Monday and then took another child home the next night. Uh, it's something that is just unsustainable. And that was Ricky Hendon, the Secretary of the Public Sector Union, which represents these workers, and she says these issues are not confined to Narragin. They are widespread. Lindsay Hall is the Executive Director of Service Delivery at the Department of Communities, which oversees the child protection system in WA. Uh, Lindsay, good morning and thank you for your time. Yeah, good morning, Nadia, and good morning to your listeners, and, and thanks for the opportunity. Why are workers having to take home kids who should be in care? Do you accept that that is unacceptable? Well, it's certainly it's certainly not what any of us want to see, but it's a hard reality, unfortunately, that sometimes, particularly this late in the day and particularly this late in the, the day, late in the week, there are it's very hard to find the options that we want for a child and in those circumstances, yes, we do have staff who voluntarily do uh, sometimes take a child home. Some of those staff, by the way, are registered foster carers themselves. And sometimes we have the situation where it's necessary to have a child or children in a motel. And obviously we need our um, workers alongside them to, to take care of them. When that happens, it's always voluntary and it's always compensated. But of course, it's absolutely a last resort. More broadly, the union says that many offices around WA are running significantly short on staff. One district had 50 staff members resign in one year, currently short by around 25 staff they are funded to have. Um, do you acknowledge that you have a serious problem in not having enough caseworkers? I think the first thing I really want to acknowledge is that this whole child protection system is the whole fundamental of the system is these frontline workers, these high quality, very dedicated people who work in under enormous stress. We know it's, you know, what job could be any more challenging? Are you dealing with people impacted by trauma? You're dealing with child abuse, child neglect and, um, and, and great distress. So we fully appreciate that, you know, it's hard work and uh, we absolutely understand that the people are our most, you know, vital. They appreciate aspects. all that, but Lindsay Hale. So my question was, are, is, are you understaffed? Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, the fact is we, like many organisations, are constantly under challenge to maintain the staffing levels we need. And like many organisations in a state as vast as Western Australia, sometimes that challenge is, of course, greater the, the, the more remote we go. That is our constant task. And um, so we do things like we are always refreshing our pools of um, uh, recruitment pools. We're always looking for ways to onboard people as quickly as we can. We have challenges with that because even as we bring them on, we then need to uh, train them into our, our systems and, and frameworks for uh, working. So I acknowledge it is a pressure point. But we manage that uh, also by our team leaders and our district directors monitoring where the pressure points are and, if necessary, moving the support where it has to be by bringing in, uh, drawing on a statewide relieving service, if that's what we so, need to do. Okay, so you're admitting you're understaffed. That, that, that's the impression I get. The union says you need another 200 caseworkers right now at a minimum. Well, that's, what that, commitment that's can different. you give to that? No, well, hang on, that's a, that's a different matter. The, the union's clearly putting a view forward on, on what they think the overall staff should be. But we make every effort to fill those positions, and if we can't, we make every effort to move the resource where it's the priority is to make sure we're doing our best to keep children safe. Okay, now, so... In, in I... fact, I, 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 yeah, I, I recognise um, this concern about the numbers of staff, but I think we need to also acknowledge so the numbers of staff in child protection have um, have continued to increase year in, uh, year out, and the case worker um, loads, uh, are, so if we take the Narragin example, the, the loads are actually well within the prescribed limits that we are absolutely committed to. One of the things, for example, that we're doing, have been doing this year and we're rolling out across the year, is we are refreshing everybody's learning around what we call the science of safety framework 
which is how we approach our um, child protection work. Now, the important thing about that is that is going to every level of the organisation and across the organisation, not just child protection work, the whole organisation insight into how we're working in child protection. But the most important thing I think that's relevant here is it's providing a forum in every district across the state, not only for people to be refreshed in the framework, but also to raise any issues they have, anything they see that where we can improve and they do. our organisation. And they do, and they raise them and to and they do and they raise them to us because they feel your department isn't listening. I need to leave it there, Lindsay Hale, because we are heading towards uh, the news at nine o'clock.